This is a video for the Snow X Pivot Pro 1075X on replacing the plastic spinner disc and replacing it with a carbon steel spinner disc. Tools required for this are listed on the left and the tools required for installation will be on the right. Now if you happen to engage your spreader and you hear a big clunk, chances are several things could have happened here. One of them is you didn't clear your spreader out of all the material that could have possibly been in there, which will cause something like this to happen. Or you got a majority of it out but didn't realize it was on a spinner plate or you have a manufacturing defect on your spinner plate. And something like this will happen. Uh, needless to say, this will not make you too happy if this happens. Now the best way to prevent something like this from happening is to make sure you clear your spreader out. As much as you try to clear it out and you think you've got it, you might end up with some debris in there anyway, depending on the auger that you have in there in which it will break up the little chunks and so forth. Some of it might get through, others might not. If you're tired after a long night's work and you do not clean out your spreader and it sits on the bottom and it freezes and it gets caked up, and you actually turn your spreader on when you get ready to use it instead of inspecting it, this is what's going to happen. As I stated before, this is for the Snow X Pivot Pro 1075X. I don't know about other models made by Snow X. They may be similar, they may not. I'm only covering this particular model. The first thing you need to do is make sure you unplug your spreader. And if you're smart, you'll keep the keys to the vehicle in your pocket where nobody can get near it, run over your ass. It's the kind of luck that I have. And this is the first time I'm doing this video. And I've never done this before, but I am mechanically inclined. The shop wanted $250 to do this. And I was in a rush. I needed to get out. I needed to do my accounts. That was important that I did that. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is remove the zip strip that actually came with this unit and just cut it off with your dikes and you're gonna have your plastic shield and you're gonna have to move that to feed that cord through now I'm gonna give you a better camera angle and a better camera shot in a second so you can see what I'm talking about so you can feed this through and know what I'm talking about now again you're gonna pull your plastic shield and you're gonna feed your cord through here as you can see and it's that simple and then you're just going to pull it out so you can drop your unit down the road. Now I've sped this video up so that way you didn't have to get bored with it. I am using a 916 on these outside ones. Now the nuts on the inside are normally welded. Sometimes they may not be. If that's the case, you're going to need a 5 8 on the inside. Again, I have sped this up so you can actually see what I'm doing here and not get bored at the same time. Now you can use a ratchet on this if you want to do that. I'm um, using a, a box end so that way you can see what I'm doing. You don't want to take these completely out. You want to leave one bolt in if you can so that way you can loosen them all up at the same time. As you can see I'm doing here. Now that we've moved on to the other side, I've sped this up as well. We're going to remove these using your 9 16 And again, if the weld's broken on the nut on the back side, you'll have to use your 5 8 on the back side. Okay, now for the fun part. Now we're going to remove this assembly. You left your one bolt in on one side, one bolt on the other. Now we've got one bolt holding it in. Now what you're going to do is you're going to brace your knee underneath 
and you're going to remove the one bolt. This is very light and it's going to come straight down. Won't be a problem at all, as you can see. Comes right down. No problem at all. And I'll give you a little bit better shot. I'm going to readjust the camera so you can see what it looks like while it's removed. And yes, it is dented in. Compliments of a bucket loader doing that. Now I've actually propped this up so you can get an idea of what I'm doing and you can see a little bit better as to what I'm doing. So the first thing we're going to do is use our four millimeter wrench. Yes, I said four millimeter. Now it might have some gunk in there. You might have to clean it out. It's not that hard to clean out. I've already cleaned it out in this situation. Four millimeter works in there perfect. Fits nice and tight. It's not loose and then it slides right off. Yours isn't going to come off this easy. I'm telling you that right now. You're going to have to pound the heck out of it with either a rubber mallet in order to get it off or a hammer lightly to get it off. Now, the plastic one, as you can see, is cracked. And this one has a pin. Now, I'm going to reposition this so you can see it a little bit better. It's a flimsy, tiny little pin. Now, I'll reposition this again so you can see it. And you can see the pin sticking out a little bit. And I'm going to use a light duty hammer. You can use a heavy duty hammer if you want. Just, you know, you don't want to beat the snots out of this. You want to be gentle with it. And I'm just going to prop this up so you can see what I'm doing. This four millimeter Allen wrench is perfect for this. And I know one of you is going to want to go, why are you using metric? Get over it. It's my video. You want to make a better one, go right ahead and do it. This works perfect. As you can see, comes off. No problem. And it's got that flimsy little pin. Now yours isn't going to come off this easy. You're going to have to work at it. It's a pain to get it off. And it's that simple to get it off. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our 10 inch carbon steel spinner on. And if you want you can rotate your shaft. It only rotates one way. I'm doing this so you can see how it actually goes on. Now, if you remember, your plastic one had a little tiny pin. It was real small. And this carbon steel, which is nice and heavy duty, has a nice thick bolt. You want to make sure you get this bolt to tighten up on the flat part of the shaft itself. I'm going to speed this video up so you don't have to watch the whole boring thing from start to finish. Now we're going to want to put our auger bit on. And it should slide on that easy. And using our 4 millimeter, of course, you want to take out that set screw. And you want to make sure you line it up with the hole. So that way it lines up on the flat part. And then you're just going to tighten it up. It's that simple. Now we're going to put it back on and we're going to do the same thing we did before. This unit is real light, easy to put up in there. You want to go straight up in with it and then what you're going to do is put your knee underneath it and brace it like you see here and then you're gonna start one of your bolts and it should line right up it might take a little bit of finagling but you'll get it lined right up as you can see here Now we're going to work on the other side. 
get our bolt started over there. You might have to move this a little bit with your knee back and forth, but it's real simple. Easy to get them all lined up and tightened up. Now we're going to feed our cord back through and put it back like it was before. I'm going to hold the plastic shield back so you can see where I'm trying to feed it through here. It's real simple, nothing to it. Again, I'm pulling the plastic guard back so you can see what's going on with the plastic shield whatever you want to call it so now we'll pull our plastic shield back pull it through as you can see here and then we're going to use our zip strip and put it back in the same spot that we had it before if you can see by my big fat head you might not want to tighten the zip strip down that tight so that way you can adjust it to get it where you want to put it then we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug this in. Again, you'll have to adjust it to get it to where you want to put it. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want it bouncing around either. Now you want to go ahead and double check your bolts and your nuts. Make sure they're tight. I left them all loose so that way I could get them started and pretty close to being tight and then I went ahead and did my cord and now I'm just doing a retighten to make sure that they're going to be nice and tight and now for the moment of truth going to make sure that this is going to work. You want to start your vehicle, obviously, and you want to engage this. You want to make sure it's going to spin okay and not hit against anything and it's fairly level. And this looks perfect. This is exactly what you're shooting for right here. So this should uh, hopefully help you out. Hopefully help some of you out. Welcome any comments or suggestions. Thanks for watching.